Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Now is your chance to qualify for the golden ticket. Please don't text and drive. Standard message and data rates apply. Q101. All right, let's go. First one of the day, 6.30 here, and we'll do it again at 7.30, 8.30, and 9.30 with a different keyword every hour. The first word that goes till 7.29 is GLOW. Text GLOW. That is G-L-O-W, as in Day Glow. Mm -hmm. The band you'll win tickets to if you win. That's your qualifying prize. But the word is not Day Glow. It is... GLOW. Thank you. I kind of said it with too many Gs there or too many Ls. GLOW. No, it's GLOW. Do you want to spell it for us? G-L-O-W. But the, some of those letters sound similar. Can you maybe yeah, sound it out? Yeah, could you give us an example of each letter? Okay, G is in God. <laughs> <laughs> Is great. Yeah. <laughs> we love him. Uh, popular guy. <laughs> L is in licorice. Nice. Mm, love it. Not black licorice, though. No hate. You know what I mean? It's nope. just like it's so bitter. O as in O, O. Like the O face in office space. He goes, give me your O face. O. Haven't yes. seen office space. I don't understand the reference. Oh, my God. <laughs> o as in oh, my God. You haven't seen office space? <laughs> Today, by the way, he's reviewing Point Break at 8 o'clock. So yeah. Point Break, the original, because he did Fast and Furious last week, and I, and I was the one that called this many years ago. They're the same movie, just a different setting. But we'll I think get... other people saw that. No, 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 I'm telling you. I was the first before the well, internet saw no it. there was no Twitter, so you couldn't be like, hey, this is, you don't have a text proof that you're the first person who thought that. I, I know that I am th from me. You should believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? You've always been so truthful. Damn right. <laughs> Sorry. Damn right. I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, so let's see. So it's G L O and then W. What do you do for w? w as in washboard abs that I don't have. Mm, accurate. Uh, sure is us. <laughs> I was going to say George W. Bush. Jesus. At my W. These people have no idea oh, what the text now. He could have been G and W. You yeah. could have really doubled up there. I can't wait to see what text you're getting after oh, all these God. words are just thrown out. <laughs> so what is text in glove? <laughs> <laughs> let's be really clear. The word is glow. G L O W. 312 mm, 591 So text that in. Uh, Daglo playing the Aragon, by the way, same place they played with Twisted. And then you'll qualify for the golden ticket. Everything Q101 does for an entire year. And this is from Riot Fest to Riot Fest, to Lollapalooza, to Lounges, to Twisted. It's incredible. So text GLOW, G-L-O-W, right now to 312. I like to clarify that is two Riot Fests. It doesn't stop right before the next Riot Fest. We're not being tricky. You get to go to both. You yeah. get to Riot six days. Yep. All the way through. Mm -hmm. All right, now a fact that makes your brain go that relates to the movie Titanic. And a lot of great facts came in. In fact, we used a fact on this before last year that they hired actors that were short to make the boat look bigger. That's not the fact today, but remember that fact? I do. <laughs> I still don't believe it because a bunch of the actors were also tall, which I find confusing. I think they just hired more extras that were like, yeah, what's your uh, Bumble profile say? You're six foot? No way, man. You're five three. You're in, you're in the movie. Get in the movie. Man, I could have been in the Titanic this whole time. <laughs> it pisses me off. Okay, so here's the fact that's going to make you, next time you watch the movie, you'll watch it differently, thinking about this. Okay. So here it is. James Cameron was the director of Titanic. He also, just so you know, might be known for Terminator, Terminator 2, the greatest movies of all time, some of them anyway. Uh and he did Abyss, he did Avatar, he did the Alien movies, so many movies, the greatest director of all time. He also did, what, Vinny Chase's Aquaman. Thank you. I was <laughs> going to say, he's also known for his work in Entourage. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the fact that makes your brain go. James Cameron, mm -hmm. his main motivation for making Titanic was to get the studio to pay him to dive down to the real Titanic's wreckage. In a quote, he said, I really didn't want to make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> He was just trying to get someone to pay him like $100 million to go down to the Titanic because they had to in those scenes. They had to go down and show that footage. But so he wanted to see it, you're saying? He, he wanted, wanted to see to it himself. that, but he didn't want to make the movie. Yeah, he was like, but they were like, well, if you make the movie, we can send you down there. We'll use the footage. And he kind of just snowed the studio into doing it. Of course, it became a billion-dollar movie and helped make well, his career God, even bigger. that submarine wasn't the one that blew up, we wouldn't even have the movie. And, we'd, and he'd be gone. We'd have no oh. more James Cameron movies afterward. What a bummer. You wouldn't have had Avatar if you liked that movie. <gasps> I do like Avatar, which is just Pocahontas, which nobody talks about. Oh, kind of like Point Break is Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah. But isn't that wild that he just kind of snowed the studio into doing it? And he's like, oh, you know, if I you, you give me, a, I don't know, a billion dollars worth of equipment, I'll go down there and I'll make you a movie about a boat that crashes. Everybody knows what happens. The ending, there's no spoiler there, you know? It's true. That movie really shouldn't have worked the way that it did. Why? Because we all knew what happened. 
Yep. Not, not between their love. Mm. Was I the only one that was mad? <laughs> you could have predicted the diamond was going to get thrown back in the water. Yeah. Ugh. You don't know anything, Case. No, I, I was so angry, and I know this is bad, but that she, like, lived a happy life after and, like, got married and had kids. I was like, what a whore, you know? Wait, like, why? She had Jack, and she just let him die. And she's like, well, I'll just marry somebody else. He told her to, though. Whatever. Guys say things they don't mean all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do I think he was just, like, you know, in heaven? Like, what the hell? Hey, you know, I could have fit up on that thing. Yeah, and then you just go marry, you get railed. She had, like, eight kids. Do you know Like, that's not Did cool. Did she? She had a ton of kids. Remember all the photos? But they were just her doing stuff. Like you said, <laughs> she was riding horses. <laughs> she was on kids. Ferris wheel. I think the kids were taking all the pictures. I thought she only had the one grandkid that she lived with in the apartment yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, maybe one grandkid. Who knows yeah. if the kids wanted to have kids? Well, they probably knew her routine, so yeah. watch out for her. She's shady. Does yeah. it count as getting railed if it leads to children? Yes. <laughs> Well, yes, it does. <laughs> for the purposes of this show, it's making love, and I want you to correct yourself in the future. Good to know. Mm-mm, it does not. <laughs> making love is how babies are made. No. When mommy and daddy <laughs> like each other a lot. There's whoops of babies all the time. Uh huh. Oh yeah, but that's also. They were. It, it did not come from love. <laughs> came from Jägermeister. Exactly. All right. So you know what's funny though is in the movie, Bill Paxton who Case now knows from Twister, was the guy that got to go down and appear to be the one that goes down and sees Titanic wreckage, which gives us an excuse to play a Twister audio from Bill Paxton. <laughs> <laughs> so a different movie, but when he sees, but of still course, iconic. when he sees his rival coming on, uh, what's that guy's name, Case? The rival, you remember his name? Oh, God, I don't remember his name. Oh, I think he says it in the clip here. Let's play he that. Does. This is from Twister. Is not Jason ta- something? Mm, we'll see if he says it here. Jonas. Oh. Jonas! Son of a nutcracker. All right. Here's a treat for you on a Friday. Jonas, son of a bitch. (laughs) Who is that, honey? Jonas Miller, he's a night crawler. (laughs) We all start out in the same lab that Jonas went out and got himself some corporate sponsors. (laughs) He's in it for the money, not the science. (laughs) (laughs) He's got a job. (laughs) I don't know why those SUVs didn't have Taco Bell on them. I know, it should have looked like a NASCAR. Son of a bitch. (laughs) He's a night crawler. (laughs) I want to hear it again. I'm sorry. This is the best movie clip of all time, man. Jonas, (laughs) son of a bitch. Who is that, honey? Jonas Miller. He's a night crawler. We all start out in the same lab that Jonas went out and got himself some corporate sponsors. He's in it for the money, not the science. (laughs) He's in it for the money, Money. not the science. (laughs) Oh, boy. Well, there's your fact today. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. That's Joe Keery, who plays Steve Harrington on Stranger Things. And he went to DePaul and right out of DePaul got taken up by Stranger Things. And he wrote a great song about Chicago. And speaking of great Chicagoans and things that are iconic in this wonderful city that you experience every day and I do is Riot Fest, which is coming up September 20th. September, uh, Saturday, September 21st, and Sunday, September 22nd, with the greatest lineup I've seen in just about 100 years. So joining us, 100 years. So joining us right now on the phone is Riot Mike, the creator, and uh, the man behind the curtain of Riot Fest. And the huge news, obviously, this week was we had announced with Riot Mike a few months back that it was in Bridgeview, and now it's come back to Douglas Park, its true original home. I mean, I know there's Humble Park, of course, but for many years, Douglas Park. And Riot Mike, thank you for joining the show this morning. We appreciate you calling in. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Oh, good morning. So right out of the bat, uh, you know, just to get everybody's questions and going on, what was the process and how did this all come about? Because it's been on every, you know, besides us breaking the news, and, and we love you so much for always giving us the info that's going to happen with Riot Fest. And then, of course, like even WGN-TV. I think I even saw this on a Russian music website came across my Probably. timeline somehow. Zdravstvo. <laughs> 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 I, I, I don't know why that hit my algorithm and it came across my timeline, but I'm aware that Riot Fest comes back to Douglas Park. So so give us the information on that, on, on the process, what happened, how did it happen, and how happy you are now to be back in Douglas Park. It, well, let's start. I'm happy. I'm, I'm thrilled to be back. And quite honestly, it, there was no intention to come back at all. None. I mean, we, we, you know, the decision was made to move, move to Bridgeview. And then after we announced, um, for the very first time, we actually got a call from the mayor's office. And so we've been around since, what, 2005? 
Um, that was the first time anybody downtown reached out to us and they wanted to talk and, uh, um, see why we left. So <laughs> that's a pretty funny thing. So, uh, Hey, why'd you guys leave? Haven't talked to you. Don't really know you that well, but why'd you leave? <laughs> and I, I, I think, you know, there was like, it, it kind of, it, it came out of nowhere. So, you know, it was a week or two, um, after we made the announcement, uh, I had a meeting with the mayor and really on my end, there was no expectations. I would even, it, it, there was no like really set agenda on anything. It was like, you know, I, it was, you, you know, they wanted a meeting and I'm, yeah, let's, let's talk. And out of that meeting, I mean, we didn't talk about like, like coming back to Chicago or anything at some point, maybe within like five, 10 minutes in, um, it was, it was, ah, the mayor and I said goodbye day. Hmm. And the things, you know, we were talking about independent and alternative culture um, and, and its relation to community and how you have really two communities that are underappreciated and underserved in Chicago, one of them being the 24th Ward and the other one being independent music. Mm-hmm. You know, so it resonated. And I could tell it resonated with him. And it, from that, really that one discussion, it planted a seed of, <sighs> maybe we should come back. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yep. And the more it just started growing in my brain and feeling that we were aligned with somebody downtown who actually 100% we were aligned, he, he did say it. He understands the why Metro is a cultural asset, why the fireside bowl. Sure. It's a, because it's the same thing as in many ways as a grocery store in a community that's been there for 30 years. That's not some huge super bowl store with a huge parking lot. Yeah. Family owned stuff, small businesses, very much related. And so in many ways I was talking, in many ways it was, it was a little bit of self-reflection because I thought I saw the, how genuine and authentic he was with this. And that was the big surprise of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's amazing. Yeah. And, and now it's, and then you proceeded and all the stuff, I can't imagine what it's like to try to bring it back, but you did. And with all those roadblocks and stuff with the city, and now you've got this, you know, relationship with Chicago, like you said, after pretty much 20 years of Riot Fest, and that makes us all feel good. And like you said, about independent music and being in Chicago where it belongs. Yeah, it, I, I didn't know what the reaction was um, with the decision or how it would be taken on bus coming back. Clearly, it was a huge lift. It's like we're setting, you know, creating this village, you know, in a new venue and to just pick that up and, and bring it back. That was a huge lift. And it's, it's a lot of it. It wasn't like, hey, let's just do this. It, it, it took weeks. To, to see whether that was even possible. Now, uh, and... Mr. Mr. Riot, Mike, I have to ask, because a lot of people were very excited um, about Riot Land and all the things that were going to be offered there, kind of because of the space that you were going to obtain. Mm-hmm. Can we look forward to a Riot Land still being mapped out, or is it going to be more yes. of the traditional what it was last year? Just what can people expect now? Riot Land is making its way over to Douglas Park. Okay. And that was part of the process of, <laughs> you know, the weeks, whether or not, how are we going to jigsaw this in? And we have a lot of great people working to stay. You know, Riot Fest staff is the best. And after weeks and everybody just dedicating, you know, a lot of time, energy, dropping a bunch of stuff. To, to make sure that we can do this. And yeah, in a few weeks, we're going to be putting out the new map for it. I'm really excited. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine it's crazy because, yeah. you know, this vision that you had for Riot Land that you expressed, you know, so eloquently, like I said, a couple months ago on the radio, and to do that now at Douglas Park and how you're going to map it all out and, and crush it in there, it's going to be, I, I can't wait to see it. It's going to be wild. It, it, it's exciting. It, it, it belongs in Chicago. It really does. Riot Land was always meant to be for Chicago. Yeah. And for the fact that, you know, <laughs> it moved before being, uh, before it was actually actualized, then coming to 
to a new location. So Riot Land has moved twice now, and I don't think that's ever been done. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know? Yeah, it's pretty it, insane. It, it, it is, and uh, it, it just feels right. Wow. It feels awesome. You know, like, as I love the announcement when you made it, the move, but to, to me, it does, and just like your feelings are, like just to sit there in Douglas Park in the skyline playing, and of course we're going to have Fall Out Boy and Offspring and Cypress Hill and Public Enemy just on the first night alone with Sum 41 and No FX and their first of their final three shows mm-hmm. ever. A lot of bands, uh, and then that's just, that's just Friday, which, by the way, we're, as we go through the schedule that dropped yesterday at the Times, Boy, I got to buy some new running shoes before Riot Fest. I know. And I got to start working out. I got to start doing something uh, for the next six weeks. You know, to, you know. The, the one advantage, the huge advantage of Douglas Park is that, you know, how we, it's it, in many ways, like the stages are going to be somewhat the same as they were last year. There's some one movement towards like where the cove is because that's where Riot Land will be living. But the great thing is how we've, it up it's like not really that much walking between stages it's not like a laborious like you're herding cattle you know uh, <laughs> like downtown even with lalo you know they do so many people it's just like it takes like a 40 minutes to get to north to south well we're lucky we don't have to it's really it's a couple minute walk from the furthest stage to you know, two further stages, only a couple minute walk. So well, thank goodness, because the way I have to haul ass from Cypress Hill to Public Enemy is unbelievable. <laughs> 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 they each other. <laughs> Kenzie will be wearing her goth boots, too. She has to have the look. So uh, on the grass and trying to get to those different stages. I'm a thank, little wobbly. You know? yeah, the, <laughs> the good thing is those two stages are next to each other. There you go. Yeah, baby. <laughs> two stages, yeah you, all you have to do is turn your head. <laughs> <laughs> to me. <laughs> oh man yeah it's gonna be an incredible weekend of course so as we go through the whole weekend you know with back and, and pavement on on saturday and then you know that's kind of oh that's that's epic and then the throwdown day as i like to call it because he got like mastodon suicidal tendencies lamb of god rob zombie slayer and then you got sublime and slayer mm-hmm. playing at the same time a lot of people checked in on that and thought it was hilarious you got slayer and sublime at the same time also no effects doing their final show on another stage at the same time too at no effects yeah. world Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I I see maybe if I'm lucky enough because it's like you know being on site. It's kind of my job. No sure if it's operating right, and you know, everybody could find me if something would go wrong. Um, this year's going to be hard for me to stay put. Uh, there's a lot of things <laughs> I want to see. I'll tell you that much. And you know everything from having Slayer back after their hiatus and Pavement big one for us you know yeah I'm trying for years and it just kind of came out of nowhere and you know last minute like maybe a couple weeks before we announced they were available we're like whoa yes all day long <laughs> <laughs> the offer <laughs> well listen uh riot mike we're so happy you checked in this morning and we're so stoked it's back in douglas park in chicago where it belongs and thanks for sharing the story of that we'll see you soon obviously in about uh i guess uh six five six weeks days. And uh, can't wait for all the stuff involved uh, with it. I am uh, very happy that we found it. This is like, I love talking um, to both of you. It's such an easy interview. I get like, you know, we're doing live TV. And <laughs> it's so, uh, it's stressful. <laughs> this is like, we're just talking amongst friends. And I, 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 I'm glad I'm starting my morning off. With you. Aww. Aww, we love you. You know, we're just kicking it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just kicking it in here, you know? That's what yeah. we do. Oh, well, well, thank you, Mike. Have a stellar day, and we'll see you soon. All right, happy Friday. Yes, yes. All right, there's Riot Mike and the information coming in, of course from uh, Riot Fest of all that's happened this week. All the information at Q101.com, all of our socials, because Riot Fest, also riotfest.org, all of their socials, too. We all link together because we're great partners, and that's why we love Riot Fest, and we love you. The Brian and Kenzie Show. Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. Q101. Noah Khan, Brian and Kenzie, Q101. So we're not quite to 8.30. So coming up after the review of Point Break will be the new keyword for the golden ticket and your chance as a qualifying prize. How about Weezer? And that's going to be over at the Allstate Arena. Uh, so you get Weezer coming up. That's Friday, st- September 6th, which isn't that far away now when you think about it. No, and I'll be there. I'm super, super excited for that show. They're playing the Blue Album in full for the 30th anniversary of that. <sighs> much like Riot Fest with Offspring doing Smash. Mm-hmm. I love these album plays. And I, you know, you think... 
from Tuesday, Dookie and American Idiot and other songs that Green Day did all in one <laughs> night was insane. And I'm really digging it. These 30 anniversaries of albums, these 20 anniversary of albums, it's pretty damn cool. But let's get on to something that's 33 years old this year, just past that anniversary of the movie Point Break with Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves. The best uh, movie combo in movie history, without question. In I'm, terms of a one-two punch of actor and actor? You had guys, you had one that was already a legitimate star from 80s to 90s, Patrick Swayze, and Keanu that was on the rise. He'd been in a few movies by then. He had Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. That's got to be on your list at some point. Yeah, I've never seen that. Oh, my goodness. So he had that where he was kind of this, well, I don't need to explain the Bill and Ted right now. We'll get yeah, to that let's later. Let's get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> let's get right. So, so cinema started in the early 1900s, right? Let's, 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 let's sidebar that one for just and a then smidgen. we got to Bill and Ted. I see, I see, I see. Let, let's just focus on Point Break. That's and, a good one. That's a good call. And as we always do, so Case watched this because he watched Fast and Furious last week. I said, you have to watch Point Break then because they Fast and Furious stole the exact plot of Point Break. But let's get to the trailer, uh, as we always do, from 1991, the trailer for Point Break. On the coast of Southern California, Oof. you can only surf, party, <laughs> and make love for so long before it's time to go to work. Rock and roll. 27 banks in three years. Anything to catch the perfect wave. I'm not a crook. Patrick Swayze. Fear causes hesitation. And hesitation will cause your worst fears to come true. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. And you think I joined the FBI to learn to surf? Point break. Adios, amigo! Okay, maybe the greatest trailer of all time. No kidding. That's so badass. <laughs> you can only, what do you say in the beginning? You can only surf and make love and surf, party. Surf, party, and make love for so long before oh. you have to get to work. Hey, On the coast That's... of Southern California, <laughs> That's what you, always say. you can only surf. <laughs> party. <laughs> and make love <laughs> for so long oh. before it's time. To go to work. Okay. That's what I say to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Surfing out there in the pond in Elgin. Yeah, just, come on, let's get to work. Here. Hang in ten. Okay, Kay, so it's all you. I, I really jealous you got to watch this for the first time as a 25 year old that doesn't, you know, see all the big movies out there. Before we started doing this bit, what did you think of Point Break? Talk to me. So sometimes when I listen to music, I I have the thought of like, oh man, I was born in the wrong generation because you know I really wish I was experiencing say bands in 1991 in real time because I was born at the end of the 90s and I I missed so many great mo movements throughout music history. Watching Point Break made me also feel like I was in the wrong generation because I should have been a world-class bank robber in my 20s, and I missed out on that opportunity. Facts. I could have been Bodie. Well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get you, Case, because I've always thought that I would be super good at surfing. I don't know yeah. why, but I really? always feel like I have a lot of strength in my legs. Mm -hmm. right? It's the biggest part of my body. I'm very low and sturdy. I feel like mm. if you're tall, it works against you. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can keep my balance on a, like, on a board. <laughs> I just am like, if I could be in a sport, this would be it. And I see that movie, and I'm like, oh, I would have been part of the culture. Wow, yeah. I love that. See, I, I watch the bank robbers with the president masks, and I go like, this this could have been me. I could have been Nixon. I'm fascinated by Nixon anyway. <laughs> Let me throw his mask on. These banks back then, they had all this money, and they had the, the smallest security presence imaginable. Now, you, everywhere you go, Big Brother's watching. There's cameras yeah. all over the place. The Patriot Act killed bank robbers for good. <laughs> I hate it. This movie made me want to rob a bank so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be Bodie when yeah, I saw oh this movie. God. Well, it's a lot like I watched Karate Kid for the first time and my takeaway was that Daniel sucks and that Cobra Kai were the good guys in the movie yeah. because they rode motorcycles and did karate which is awesome karate this guy robs banks and surfs he's like my hero <laughs> he's awesome <laughs> We had a listener, I believe, checked in last week when we talked about this a little bit and said he named his kid Bodie. I wanted to change my name to Bodie when I saw this movie. <laughs> that should have been one of your radio names. Oh, it should have been. I know. You have so many names. Why don't you just pick it? You know what's funny? 
is there is a Bodie radio guy out there already. Oh, is there? One of these guys took that name. <laughs> yeah, I'm Bodie. And I said, ah, I'd look like that. I can't do that. That's too bad. 312, it's so funny you say that. 312 uh, literally just checked in and said, Point Break is so good. If I have a son, I'm totally naming him Bodie. Hell yeah. How many Bodies are there out there? Are there more Bodies than cases? I used to live next to a Bodie. No, really? you did not. Yes, I did. We're here. Yes, and, I and did. Got, no, you did not. Yes, okay. I did. <laughs> Was it Patrick Swayze? No. Oh, damn. I, Wish. <laughs> Boy, would I have a different story. You know that was a kid that was named for the, after the movie because I never heard that name Bodie ever mm -hmm. when I growing up until Point Break came out. Yeah, I, I live next to a Bodie, but I think he was named after a snowboarder mm. in the Olympics. Which is kind of surfing, but cold. Exactly. <laughs> <It> makes sense. <laughs> Which is another reason I thought it'd be good at surfing because I was pretty good at snowboarding, but I... I hate snow. I'm like, well, this mm. sucks. Let's go to the chalet and some high chocolate. There's a I'm lot like, of things well, you wish you could be. I know. And then it just can't happen. I, I can just curious, do it. First now, it's just, if there is a Bodie listening, call in. Please let us know. If there's a Bodie, just a Bodie out there listening. Anyway, back to your Point Break review. The thing I love about this movie is that, and, and I mean no disrespect, I hope, you know, you specifically, Brian, because you're so protective of a roadhouse, you understand what I mean by this. Because now, because I've watched Roadhouse and Dirty Dancing and Point Break, I have a relationship with Patrick Swayze. Amen. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, something Kenzie wanted to do. I, I know. But uh, I couldn't, make, couldn't make happen. <laughs> Some one she wanted to do. I, mean, I saw Dirty Dancing. I was like, well, I know what family vacation we should be going on. <laughs> so I've seen him in all these different roles now. And Roadhouse is like... It's fun. You know, it's not necessarily good, but it's really fun. Yeah. Yes. Point so. Break is just incredible. This is such a great movie. <laughs> the cast here, it's Swayze, it's Keanu. Thank God it's not Matrix era Keanu, because I still don't understand what the Matrix was about. This is pre-Matrix. Yeah. And then Gary Busey, who I only know from Entourage and Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> I had never actually seen Gary Busey <laughs> act as a character before. He's fun, huh? He's a good actor. Yeah. Oh, well, he he was legendary. I mean, that's why he got in Entourage, because he was a legendary actor. And Celebrity he, Apprentice. They call, like, an actor's actor he was. Because mm -hmm. he was in a movie, The Buddy Holly Story, where he lost, like, 100 pounds to be real thin and... and you know, he he became Buddy Howe. He looked just like him. And that's what he, in this role, he's a completely, obviously, maniac. He is a maniac, but he's he's like a fun maniac. And he, he also, he loves meatball subs, which man after my own heart. And <laughs> boy, do I understand yeah. being on a stakeout and wanting a meatball sub so bad. Yeah. But I, I really, you know, we talked about this, uh, you know, for the six months I've been doing these reviews. I, I've learned that I love movies, and I'm so glad that I've, I've brought Patrick Swayze into my life because I've now seen him mm -hmm. in a bunch of different roles. See? And, and you can now say, Case, you're crazy for Swayze. I, I, can't, I could say that. Yep. Many, many would say that. Yeah. And I love him in this movie <laughs> because it's so different than Dirty Dancing, obviously, but it, it's even so different than Roadhouse because in Roadhouse, he's like cool and calm and quiet, but he's still a badass. In this movie, he's insane. Yeah. <laughs> he's just out of his mind. <laughs> and I love the, the monologue that he gives... I love any time in a movie where a bad guy gives a monologue to explain why his actions are actually good. Yeah. And he does that in this monologue. Do you realize that we have hit 30 banks in three years and they haven't been able to touch us? And all this does is up the stakes of the game. <laughs> the stakes, Pody! I mean, the only person this is a game to is you, man. This is real. I mean, this is serious <laughs> and I am scared, okay? So I say we get the <laughs> out of here now, tonight. You run, you die. <laughs> Come on, think about it. This was never about money for us. It was about us against the system. That system that kills the human spirit. We stand for something. To those dead souls inching along the freeways in their metal coffins, we show them that the human spirit is still alive. And that's what I say every morning before we go on the air. <laughs> that's what this show is. You out here in your metal coffins listening to the radio show. I got goosebumps. I, I got I get goosebumps every time Patrick Swayze talks in a movie. Oh about God. anything. God. He's you know they get people to do like insurance commercials and stuff. They should have when he was live picked him because boy oh. would I have thought that that's the insurance I needed. What a tragic loss. Oh. Doesn't that monologue just want to make you wreck havoc at a PNC right now? Yeah, I want to go kick the TV down off the wall right now. I, I really do. I want to ruin a Chase Bank employee's day. Yeah. I just want to get in the bank and, and raise hell like Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> And then it's great, his 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 interplay with Keanu Reeves throughout the entire movie. It's a weird, they have immediate chemistry, but sometimes it borders on, like, weird 
quasi-sexual chemistry where it's like a mentor and a peer, and sometimes, like, are they going to kiss or are they going to fight? And then they have, of course, <laughs> the legendary I am an FBI agent, which I'd love to hear that audio right now. Oh, my gosh. So I can't do this. Sure you can. Who knows? You might like it. It's a killer rush. Buddy, this is your wake-up call, man. I am an FBI agent. I know, man. Isn't it wild? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what makes it great, Johnny. We can exist on a different plane. We can make our own rules. Why be a servant to the law when you can be its master? If you hang in my friend group, mm -hmm. you've heard me say that line at least 1,200 times. I am an FBI <laughs> agent, Bodie. I know, man. Isn't it cool? That's the thing. Like, I swear he just defends his actions the entire time. He doesn't and care. By the end of the movie, I'm like, you know what? I would jump out a plane for this guy. Yeah. This guy's right all the time. It's absolutely incredible. This is one of my favorite. Bodie is one of my favorite characters in movie history now. <laughs> It's, Love it. It's Doughboy from Boys in the Hood, uh, and it's Bodie from Point Break. That's wow. the power ranking. That is, that's a big statement, and IMDb should get on this. He needs your movie reporters to really explain what's going on here because this is real reviewing. This isn't movie reviewers doing reviews. No. This is like real reviewing of real people like you out there that are listening right now in your car, and you know this You know this your is true as well. Coffins. Your metal coffin. I was going to say, for the people in the metal coffins. That's right. We stand for something. Before we go, because I know we got to give out the keyword for Weezer here in just a second. Yeah. But we watched this because last week, Kenzie got a speeding ticket, and so we watched That's, The Fast and the okay, Furious. let's relax. <laughs> <laughs> and now... We watched Point Break because Brian said, okay, this movie, like, The Fast and the Furious just stole from Point Break. And watching this movie, oh, my God, I can't believe how much The Fast and Furious stole from Point Break. It's the same movie, just with way better actors. Wait, wait, they re wait. They replaced Vin Diesel with Patrick Swayze, I guess, the other way around. Yeah. And my God, can you tell the difference? <laughs> wait, I think you're forgetting. Fast and Furious has a bunch of cars. Mm-hmm. It's a completely different movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's like so many cars in it. <laughs> I listen. I want to. I want to try to plant my flag here that I said that before the internet said it. You were number one. I, as soon as I saw Fast and listen, I love love the Fast and Furious franchise. I, I cannot share the same sentiment. But I said this is they stole the exact plot and boy did Point Break miss out in 91 of not starting that franchise. It's the same movie where a guy befriends a cop undercover, mm -hmm. befriends the bad guy and then he likes him so much he lets him go at the end. Yeah. Come on, just let me out there for one <laughs> May wave, man. I can't live in a box, man. And Sorry would, for I, a spoiler of Point Break. I would have done the Son same thing if I was Keanu. <laughs> Sorry, Kenzie. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, uh, look, I did not love Fast and Furious. I did not like that movie at all. I love this movie. I, I feel comfortable giving this eight waves out of ten. Eight Just waves. Eight waves. Eight, okay. Eight really really fun movie if you've never seen it spend the weekend watching it it's on demand on youtube tv you can actually watch it for free if you're a youtube tv subscriber it was so good i'm brian thank you for bringing this movie into my life well you're welcome and that's actually your highest or ties your highest movie ranking so far i don't think you've given anything a nine no shawshank and pulp fiction i would have had higher okay nine i do i as a, as a film critic i do think shawshank and pulp fiction are better than how point dare break you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> well excellent job uh, the review of point break right there from case the producer now is your chance to qualify for the golden ticket Please don't text and drive. Standard message and data rates apply. Q101. Well, you want to go see Weezer at the Allstate Arena Friday, September 6th. Our great friends Live Nation working with us on this one to get it happen for you during the golden ticket. So this is your qualifying prize. Text SWEATER to 312-591-8300. That's S-W-E-A-T-E-R. SWEATER. The 312 591 8300 right now. That gets you two tickets to Weezer All State Arena and qualifies you for the golden ticket. Access to everything Q101 does for an entire year from Riot Fest to Riot Fest. Let's go. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.